part of the specialist model, and to me personally, a very important part, is what I call the triple feedback loop. Um, I have already talked about the prep uh, meeting, then the prep mail, then the challenges of the lesson itself. After the lesson is over, my specialists come with me instantly after class to my office and we take with us the students who were now um, audience and who are going to be the specialists in the following week. We sit down and the first question goes to the person who has just been active as a specialist. And I ask the person or this team, how did it go? In your own estimate, what's your impression? How did it go in relation to what you thought was going to happen? What was your favorite moment? What was your least favorite moment? Is there anything you would change? And if so, why would you change that? And how would you change that? Maybe to avoid a problem. So that usually, depending on the energy, um, usually people are very hyper. There's a lot of adrenaline, you can feel it, they're sort of oh, completely wound up, so they need to talk, 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 and that's good. Yeah, sort of, okay, let, let, let's talk about what just happened. Um, then I ask the students who have just witnessed this lesson, who have participated, um, but who weren't active specialists. What is their impression of the lesson? What was their favorite moment and their least favorite moment? What did they think could have gone better? And what are they tempted to steal from their own special, for their own specialist performance? Because that was just a genius idea. And it's very interesting for, I think, it, for me, but also for, especially for the specialists to hear how their peers have perceived their own performance. Because very often, the perception of weaknesses and strengths differs dramatically. Um, I regularly hear people, oh my God, I was so nervous. I didn't know what to do. I could hardly breathe. And their colleagues say, really? I did. I, it could have fooled me. I didn't see it. Um, which is when I sort of jump in and say, are you listening to this? I, do, do you get what you just heard? What that means is that you can be nervous as hell and it doesn't show. From the outside, other people can't tell. Now, this is really important to know about yourself that no matter if you're jumping up and down inside and you're screaming, I don't want to do this, I'm dying, you can be calm on the outside. And that should help you because that means it doesn't show. And that is great to know about yourself because next time you do something like this, you can rely on the fact that your body surface doesn't betray the anxiety to feel inside and that usually helps with controlling the performance. Um, so after the um, colleagues who have just been audience say what they liked best and why or their suggestions or where they thought there was a bit of a lag or um, it was a bit the specialists maybe lost control for a moment or they didn't manage to lasso back um, their colleagues who went off on a, on a tangent and wasted some time uh, that produced problems uh, for the specialists, something like this. I say something. And during a lesson, I take notes. I take notes of what I see. So, um, for example, uh, if, a, if a specialist tends to turn his or her back on the audience and start talking to his or her own PowerPoint presentation. That's a classic, talking to the screen. Say, so, look, <clears throat> first of all, it's rude. And secondly, it's acoustically problematic because you're talking at the wall and the people behind you don't hear you. And you also don't see their reactions. And the wall's not gonna react, but you're gonna miss that there's a frown on your colleague's face because she doesn't understand what do you mean? But this is technically speaking important information for you to which you can't react because you don't see it. So don't turn around. Now, yeah, but then I can't see my slide. And I said, okay, let's talk about it. How can you solve that problem? Hmm, maybe I could print it out. So, ah, oh, there's an idea. Super. They're not going to make that mistake again. And the people who just heard that for next week, they certainly not going to make that mistake. Or 
put your laptop, make sure you stand between the computer screen and you just trust the technology that the Beamer works. You've tested the digital projection. It's fine. Trust it. It's gonna work. And if not, we're gonna deal with a technological problem, but you don't have to turn around. Yeah. So again, not only the specialists who've already encountered a problem, and now think, how could I have done that differently? Learn from this moment. But also the audience who's just been at the receiving end of something that was problematic and had felt how bad that feels if you don't have the um, specialist's attention and you can't communicate. Um, but they will also learn not to do that next week. And of course, as we go through the course, this will form a loop of feedback. So it's, it's like a spiral. Everyone gives something, everyone receives something. Once that is over, I say something, uh, I comment, uh, as I uh, already mentioned. Um, I also give pointers as in alternative ideas or solutions to particular problems. Um, for example, if you have a clip, of course you can show the clip and then you can ask a question. But think about doing it the other way around. Think about asking your question first. Say, think about that as you watch the clip, because you already structure your attention, the attention of your audience. Suggestions like these. Um, we also discussed the prep mail, the quality of the prep mail. I asked the audience, was the prep mail useful to you? Did it reflect what actually happened in the lesson? Or was there sort of, did they have nothing to do with each other? Um, did you feel well prepared? I also asked the audience um, students, did you actually do what your colleague asked you to do? And they are very honest. They say, oh, no. <laughs> out of these five, I, I did three. I have to be honest, I didn't do the last two. And then the specialist would say something like, oh, that's really helpful to know because that explains to me why that question didn't go so well. Because I, I was wondering, why did I not get a response? So, yeah, sorry, my bad. So usually, uh, this also explains to the specialists a perception of the dynamic change during the lesson. That is very useful. After I have, I have given my feedback, I invite the specialists who have just been active to pick one piece of insight they have had by going through this process to share with their colleagues. Uh, I call this the golden nugget. Share this most precious moment, give it to them so they can profit from what their colleagues have just learned. And again, I do this every week. So um, this passing on of some knowledge um, requires of the specialists not only to formulate what they've just learned, but it also is, it helps with a spirit of solidarity in the class. And of course, it contributes to the good atmosphere that everybody truly believes. It's not just something I say. All of us, me included, we learn in these lessons. Um, maybe, I, sometimes I suspect I learn the most in these lessons from observing. I, I have the biggest experience, the longest experience, and I have the greatest distance. So I can see developments of um, difficult situations before the people who are actually stuck in the situation can see it. Um, and that, of course, helps me become a better teacher. Mm -hmm.